hello 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 and welcome to my channel good morning good afternoon good evening good night depending on your time zone as you watch this video so excited to be here to talk about another topic related to destiny and destiny exchange destiny restoration today we'll be looking at what happens to the destiny that you got from the evil exchange after you have restored yours back what happens to that one that was given to you but was not yours so that is what we will be talking about today this is a christian channel so we will be looking at examples from the bible we'll be talking about some spiritual laws and principles based on spiritual truths relating to this topic so let's just get started right into it now destiny as we know is the package of blessings that god has created for each one of us based on his plans during creation and that is guided by the purpose that he has for us to complete during our lifetime so based on each and everyone's purpose he has created a package of blessings that is custom made for each one of us and that in one word is called our destiny and then the details of what is contained in each person's destiny god has written it in the book of destiny about us even before each one of those days came to pass that book is called the book of destiny we find information about that in psalms 139 verse 16 okay so that is where this is drawn from okay now we know that destiny exchange happens it is real some people have went through it and some people have even gone through the process of the restoration of their god-ordained destiny destiny exchange happens when other people covet the destiny that god has created for someone to have and they go to an evil altar somewhere with the help or assistance of a worker of iniquity such as a babalao mganga muchawi muti man obia waka juju man those who are doing these types of activities using powers from the kingdom of darkness are able to assist those people to collect that god ordained destiny from a person and attach it to this person this client of theirs so that then this client of theirs can go about achieving those things enjoying the blessings that are not theirs from god but that they have stolen from another person okay and so this client of the babalao this client of the mganga mchawi this client of the muti waka or obia waka is able to enjoy a quality of life that is not even theirs to begin with to enjoy okay so they are living a life that someone else should have been living okay that is the essence of it now as somebody comes becomes aware that this is what has happened to their life the experiences that they're going through are related to this exchange because when this exchange has happened the person whose destiny has been stolen from and suspecting of this they start to experience such difficulty and struggle in their life because the blessings that god created for them to support them in their life so that their life can be easier so that they can achieve certain things in their in their life based on what god has placed in their heart to achieve they can't do those things they are finding it so difficult they are having so many challenges and on top of that they are facing a lot of afflictions right that are projected from that evil altar where that destiny thief has went to to seek the facilitation services that evil altar has projected curses towards this person whose destiny was stolen from them okay by the grace of god the person recovers their god-ordained destiny the curses that were projected from the evil altar now they cannot land right according to proverbs chapter 26 verse 2 which says a curse causeless shall not land because of the destiny recovery process which includes 
fasting, breaking evil covenants, repentance, you know, um, and then having the blood of Jesus speak on a person's behalf. All that process ensures that now this person is regarded as righteous by God. They are righteous, not, not just because of their own actions, but because of the righteousness of Christ who is in them. So because they are righteous, they are without a cause. So then the curses that were projected to them at the time of the destiny exchange, those curses now cannot land at all. Those curses now are lifted. Those curses now cannot be attached to their lives anymore. So where do these curses go? Because these curses are actually evil spirits, all right? It's a curse of poverty is now the spirit of poverty that's attached to that person. You know, a curse of limitation is a spirit of limitation that's attached to that person. So these curses have spirits, evil spirits behind them. So where do these evil spirits now go to? Now, these evil spirits can no longer be attached to this person's life. And now, because the blood of Jesus is covering them, they are made righteous through Christ in them. So these curses have to lift, have to clear from that person's life. Now, these curses, these evil spirits, they now go back to that evil altar, all right? Where they were projected from. The evil altar projected these evil spirits towards this person in the form of curses. So they go back because they cannot land. They go back to that evil altar and automatically from that evil altar, because they cannot go back and land at the evil altar, they are redirected automatically to the sender. That is how, how you hear some prayers like back to sender and all of that. That is the concept behind that type of thinking where these back to sender type of prayers are coming from. But with um with your destiny restoration you don't have to be sending curses back to people right you bless them instead of cursing them so it is not your mouth that is sending these curses back to whoever has projected them to you instead you bless them but when your destiny is recovered part of god's uh, justice process is that these curses can no longer be attached to you. You have been made free. He whom the son has set free is free indeed. Therefore, these evil spirits will be going back where they came from, okay? They will be going back to the evil altar. And then as per the laws, the spiritual laws of the altar, now those curses will go back to the mouth of whoever pronounced them all right they will go back to seek that person because they are already released in the world they're already released in the atmosphere so now they will be going back where they came from they will be going back to seek the person who had released them all right and then now it is up to that person if that person has not repented then those curses will go back and land in the life of that person all right now whatever they had wished for this person whom they had stolen their destiny uh, from they will start to experience those very things on top of that they will also experience god's wrath upon their life they will start to experience for some cases, a lot of cases I've seen and I've also heard about is where they start to get tumors, right? This is in alignment with First Samuel chapter 5 verse 9, which uh, we see that God sent tumors and that was the affliction that those who had stolen the Ark of the Covenant, they received that. And then they were able to tell that it is because they have taken something that is belonging to another person, you know, the Ark of the Covenant, and they should release it to the Israelites. So as soon as somebody recovers their destiny, the person that stole that destiny already is aware, right? From the time someone starts to fast and someone starts to pray and petition God and ask for their destiny back, the person that stole that destiny is already aware. That's why sometimes they come and call you, they come and contact you out of the blue. 
or suddenly you're getting a phone call hey how are you doing are you okay is everything okay it's because they in the spirit they have already received notification that that person is claiming for their destiny back and so they become very insecure they start to monitor you they start to find out what you're doing is it a new pastor that you're you know you're going to visit is it a new church you're attending is a new prophet praying for you are you fasting what are you doing they want to find out what you're doing because they have already been made aware of the fact that you are already requesting for your blessings back okay so they are aware so they will also go back to that evil altar to you know upgrade <laughs> their package uh this is where they may do more things offer more sacrifices reinforce things to ensure that you are never successful you can never get back that destiny which they exchanged from you all right so so that they project even more curses towards you more confusion or make you so tired the spirit of heaviness oppression spiritual attacks just to break your will so that you abandon that process but if you go through the whole process and you're successful where you are also upgrading so as they're upgrading you're also upgrading right you are praying you're going on longer fasts you're not giving up you are aware of all the tricks and schemes where sometimes they show up out of the blue pretending to have missed you so much and offering you food knowing very well that food is from an evil altar somewhere just to implicate you in one way or the other to shut down your process but if you're really following the leading of the holy spirit and you're well aware of those tricks and and you know schemes and you are successful in the retrieval retrieval of your destiny what happens to them is immediately you know you're claiming your destiny and you're claiming your inheritance immediately that destiny is detached from them and immediately you start to see a major breakthrough that destiny goes back it snaps back into place right away right and you see a major breakthrough right away because it goes back in the spiritual realm and snaps right back into place where it was stolen from for them now the destiny that you have that was not yours it goes back to them it goes right back to them but on top of that so they receive back you know the destiny that they despised it goes back to them and on top of that they receive god's wrath they receive the punishment and then the curses that they projected towards you from that evil altar those ones now go back to the evil altar they cannot land there at the evil altar so they are projected back to the sender back to whoever's mouth they came from right that is why at those evil altars sometimes they ask somebody to say certain things to pronounce those curses themselves or write down those curses themselves they do that on their own right or with their own mouth they pronounce certain curses towards that person so when those curses cannot land anymore in that person's life they are going back to whoever's mouth they proceeded from right and that person now has to deal with with that situation so you find that that person who stole a, another person's destiny who, who exchanged another person's destiny their situation really becomes so bad because all these three things are now after them right the original destiny which they despised so just like we are told in the bible that esau uh, God hated Esau because he despised his birthright. Someone, please put that uh, that Bible verse down in the comment section if you remember which Bible verse it is. But it says that God hated Esau because he despised his birthright, and God loved Jacob. So because of they despised their own destiny which god created for them and they went and stole another person's destiny or they went and exchanged another person's destiny they faced the consequences of that and then also to facilitate this evil exchange they went to seek the services of the kingdom of darkness so we are told very well in leviticus chapter 26 
not to bow down to idols, not to participate in, you know, all these types of things. Even Leviticus chapter 19, verse 31, it also tells us that we should have no regard for uh, those that practice necromancy, spiritists, mediums, uh, those that practice witchcraft, sorcery. So witchcraft and sorcery are the methods that are used to exchange destiny or to steal destinies. Lest we be defiled by them because it is an abomination to the Lord. So as they have participated in this process, they have defiled themselves and they have made themselves an abomination to the Lord. So they're going to face the consequences of that. And then on top of that, they got back their little destiny, which they had, which they despised. And then on top of that, there is the curses they had pronounced to other people that they received back. And then the punishment for their disobedience, right? Because they have been, become an abomination to the Lord. They are defiled. And not only that, the saddest part of it all is that their generations will continue to suffer based on their actions. So as we are told that uh, God will visit the iniquities of the fathers upon their children to the third and fourth generation. So basically the destinies of their generations are already affected based on their actions, right? So their children will suffer the consequences. They'll be suffering the afflictions. Their grandchildren will be facing, you know, afflictions and their great grandchildren will be facing afflictions as well. So basically they have defiled their bloodline going forward. The destinies of their generations to come are also affected. Okay. And uh, now after that, it is only when now God will see that now it's time to redeem this bloodline that maybe in the third or fourth generation, God will select one of a, a child from that generation who will work so hard to repent for this iniquity and recover their destinies and bring back that bloodline back to the worship of God so that their destinies are also recovered. Their destinies are not affected anymore. And then going forward, now everything will be okay for that bloodline. But you can see that when someone participates in this type of a thing, they end up suffering. And not only that, their children, their grandchildren, their great grandchildren, like their unborn generations who don't even know why this person went and did that, what was their motivation, and were not there to you know, enjoy those stolen blessings that they received, but they will be suffering the afflictions and they will be paying back for the sins of what this person has done, right? So it's not only the destiny of that person that's affected, it is the destinies of their bloodline. It is the destinies of their unborn generation. So that is what happens to the evil de uh, destiny that someone received out of the exchange. So on the one hand, the person whose destiny was stolen, they receive back their God-ordained destiny destiny they also receive back up to seven times what was stolen from them where is this up to seven times coming from it is coming from that person who stole the destiny plus others who did that and it comes from the destinies of their unborn generations right because up to the third and fourth generation their destinies are going to be held back their destinies are going to be affected because of that sin so those destinies those blessings that were going to go for that to that person's children the thief's children or the thief's grandchildren because of what they have done based on god's justice system those blessings are taken from that unborn generation given to this you know the victim of the destiny exchange that is why they will be getting back up to seven times right because it says that at, if a thief be found, I think it's Proverbs chapter 36, chapter 6 verse 36 or 6 verse 32. Please put it in the comment section. That if a thief be found, he shall pay back not only what is told, but up to seven times that even if it costs him all the substance of his house. What is all the substance of his house? The blessings. The blessings. What is his house? His bloodline. 
that is his house, his bloodline. So even if it costs him all of the blessings in his blood, in his bloodline, then that is what it will have to take. So that means the blessings of his unborn generation will be taken automatically because God already created each person's blessings, each person's destiny and has written for each person in their book of destiny about them even before one of them came to pass, which means even before someone was born, the, the destiny, the blessings were already written in that book. So they're available in heaven for that person. So then those are detached from that person's unborn generations and attached to this person's life, right? That's how the breakthrough or the recovery process, the restoration just comes with so much blessings all at one, all at once because of that, because of that principle, it's a spiritual law that whatever somebody lost, the kingdom of darkness, what they receive back is so much more, so much greater. There's also the recompense that they receive, okay? So that is what happens to that destiny that was projected to someone and it was not, you know, their God-ordained destiny. It goes back to the thief and then their, their destinies of their unborn generations are also taken from there to be given to this, uh, to the victim because it's part of the justice system. It's how God is repaying, right? Repaying them for the evil in their bloodline and repaying uh, back the years that this victim has lost where the locust, the canker worm, the palmer worm, and the caterpillar have eaten them, they are getting restored. That is where it's coming from. So thank you so much. I hope that this video has blessed someone today. Someone had asked this in the comment section. Very good question if you're the one. Thank you. Good job. Uh, thank you so much for all your prayers. I really appreciate all your support, all your prayers. My continued viewers, thank you so much as you continue to come back and watch these videos and learn from these topics. Thank you so much for your engagement in the comment section. I really appreciate it for your questions in the comment section. Thank you. Thank you so much. If you're new to this channel, I'm the African Girl Empowered. From time to time, I put out spiritual insight videos that talk about the topic of destiny, destiny exchange, destiny theft, destiny manipulation, and more importantly, destiny restoration in alignment with the spiritual laws and principles based on the Christian faith as found in the Bible. If you like this type of content, do not hesitate to like this video and also more importantly, subscribe to this channel. Join our family. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye-bye. Shalom.